Hi everyone, it's Proxima Dust back with a tutorial again. This time, how to remove objects from the world space in Cyberpunk 2077. I know a lot of us have been waiting for this for a long time and it's finally here. There's a lot you can do with it, so let's get into stuff. As you can see, I've pretty much cleared out a lot already of the Corporal Plaza apartment, like the furniture and stuff is gone. Some things still remain like collision, so I can't walk into the middle piece here. Uh, I believe it is removable, but I found another way to work with that. So just to kind of give a sense that uh, there's quite a bit to, you can remove with this approach. Now, what I'm going to do is position myself in the bathroom because I haven't really touched this part yet. So this will give us a chance to, uh, to look for some stuff. But first things first, what you're gonna wanna do is get set up. So I've created this um, just kind of point for point document that you can use. So you can pause if you need to and just read through this. But the first thing you want to do is get Red Hot Tools set up. So that's pretty straightforward. You want to go to GitHub and here's the address. Uh, you could try Googling it and basically get the latest version. Right now it's 0 0.6.0. .0. And then I used uh, the core here, so the .zip. You can see it's the largest one and CET.zip. I'm not sure what uh, this is for, but it doesn't seem like it's needed at this point. Um, not too sure about the source codes either, but stick to these two here and I think you should be fine. Once you've got that installed and it does go into the Cyberpunk 2077 uh, directory, so keep that in mind, you're gonna wanna install it like a normal mod. The next step is to create an Excel file. This is pretty straightforward. I've already got a couple. Uh, I'm actually just gonna close this one. So you just go into Notepad and save as. Doesn't matter where you save it initially, you're just gonna be working out of that spot. So you can save to desktop. Ultimately, you do wanna put this file when it's completed and saved into Cyberpunk's mod folder. So the kind of standard folder that most things go into, that's where you would place the document. Give it a relevant name. We'll say Corpo Plaza uh, Voided in this case and just save. And uh, you're pretty much good to go. If you're not able to see the .xl or the .txt um, initial extension, you can basically just Google like, you know, how to make Windows show file extensions. Uh, here's a How to Geek article about it. It's pretty straightforward and then that should pop up. So we've got the tools, we've got our Excel file. Now we just need the code. So probably the easiest thing to do here is to just go to Man of Vortex's Apartment Corpo Plaza Cleaned and Decluttered mod, uh, which is pretty much doing exactly what we're trying to do here. So we can see there's an Excel file. Um, so you can basically download that, open it up, and it'll give you a bunch of code. So I've got the one I've been working with, so I'm just going to use the code from there. And all you really need is the first little chunk. So you need streaming and sectors. You need the path part with expected nodes and then the node deletions, and then this is just like these three last lines are a single entry for one node, in this case, a couch. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it into here. And what you're working with um, as you're finding nodes and removing them is the sector. So this part here is gonna potentially be replaced, the total number of nodes in the sector. And then this is just a, uh, a comment, so it's a, a label. So in this case, I'm recording the location of the object TV room and the name of it, it's couch number one. Uh, you're also gonna be changing the index. So this is like an identifier for the object that you're trying to remove, as well as what type of node it is. And so once you've got a sector established, if there are multiple objects you're trying to remove from the same sector, you can just copy these three lines here and then just paste them. And then, you know, for each one, so it could be like couch two, Maybe you have like table, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you're really mainly just updating then the ID uh, and the node type. And then if it happens to be from a different room, you can change that too. This isn't necessary. I just added it because it's a bit cleaner because I'm removing so many objects from the world. I wanted to track it a little bit better. So for now, we're, uh, we're good. We've got our, uh, our Excel set up. And from there uh, with the code, we're basically just going in game. And so this is the, the main part of how this process is done. It's pretty simple. You would get in, hit your CET hotkey, whatever open CET, and then this might be collapsed. If so, open it up. And basically you can start with inspect. 
So normally most players um, in the middle of their screen would have like a little dark square. I have no idea why, but it disappeared for me not too long ago and has not come back. But you can pretty much just aim the middle of your screen if that did happen. And so we can see this red outline around the towel. So now we've got this object highlighted uh, and in the inspect tab, it's showing the data for this object. So this is one way I can handle things. So if I hover my cursor over the world sector text, so this line here, and hit the middle mouse button, the one you usually use for scrolling, it should work as a copy function. And then I would basically come into here and paste it in. So there you go, it picked up fine. This happens to be the same sector I just replaced, um, but generally you can tell the difference be uh, between different sectors because the numbers will be different, these four numbers. It could just be one number, could be more. So we've got the, uh, the sector input there, and then we need the total number of nodes. So this is node 86 is the towel out of 353 nodes that are in this one sector. So we would go and update the sector total nodes. In this case, it's already correct, 353. Uh, so we'll just go down to the object itself. And I'm just going to update because now we're in the bathroom and we're trying to remove a towel. There are two of them there. So I'm going to say towel one. And then I'm going to put in its uh, ID node instance. So 86 in this case. So it's node 86 out of 353 in the sector. And then I need to update the node type because it's saying world static mesh, but this is actually an instance destructible mesh node. So I'm going to remove static and put instance destructible. And spelling is super important, so make sure that you get that right. And, uh, and that's it. And so normally, if I just wanted to remove that item, I would just save, kind of reload, and it should work fine. We'll get to a bit of troubleshooting after, but uh, most of the time it's pretty clean. Now I want to add another um, node that I'm trying to remove from this sector. So I'm just going to copy these three lines that are used for each entry and I'm going to change this to towel 2 and then I'm going to go back in here and I can just recenter over the next towel and there it is showing up. So we see it's the same sector, that's good. A bunch of similar information and this is 83 instead of 86 is the ID. One quick note you might think that for sectors, um, for example, that this bathroom is like one sector or the apartment is one sector, but that's not the case. The sectors are uh, created using some other logic that only CDPR knows right now. And the reality is that this one apartment space that I'm in has five different sectors. And this bathroom uh, could actually have multiple different sectors kind of cutting into it. So you always have to make sure that you're paying attention to what the sector is and that you're recording the right one. So that's like kind of the core method when you target and you find it with the outline and everything works great. Now, some other stuff, um, sometimes that won't work. For example, this one, the bar is pretty thin, so maybe I can't get over it. Um, but worse than that is it says world collision node. So collision nodes are just nodes that the devs plant in the world to stop players from passing through things. So potentially you could remove it. It's got, you know, it's got an ID, it's got a sector, but I try to avoid that because I don't want to remove collision and have people walking through things they shouldn't be walking through. And collision nodes can be really huge. So I don't know how far it extends because there's no outline for it or anything like that. So typically we, I'm just going to, you know, leave collision nodes. You know, it's probably good for you to do the same. So to find things behind quote unquote, the collision node, you can use the scan tab. And it's using, I think, the same premise. So your kind of center targeter will be like the point of contact. Uh, you can set the distance. 40 is, is pretty high. Uh, most things you can find by dropping down to maybe like five, maybe 10. Um, you're not gonna wanna filter in initially. So once you've kind of pointed and you've got your distance set, you just click scan world nodes. So now it's showing 79 nodes out of 294. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types of nodes and we can filter the search down. So if I were to write towel, I've found the two towels. So say there was a collision node blocking those towels and I couldn't find them with inspect, I could go to scan and find them that way. So that's great. So to find this piece, I could try like rack, that doesn't find anything. Um, and basically most uh, objects have intuitive sounding names. So you can likely come up with it in most cases. I have found some stuff that I just can't locate. And there could be a few different reasons. Uh, one thing could be that maybe this rack piece is actually uh, part of the wall 
or part of like a prefab that they used for this room. And so you'd be looking for like the wall name or the prefab name. Uh, I spent a little bit of time, I couldn't find it. Uh, it's kind of not relevant, I think, to this. Sometimes there will be um, objects that you just can't find and you kind of got to deal with it and like, you know, cover, cobble over, you know, cover it up with something else. Um, so for now, kind of forget that. But what we can do here um, with our search is look for toilet. And so we found panel. Okay, so it's not finding anything else. If I increase distance, I might have a bit better luck. And now it's still just finding the panel. So I try scanning, click the scan button again, and now it's found the bottom part of the toilet, which is good. Uh, as you can see, this, what looks like one object is actually three. So we've got the core toilet, we've got the co toilet cover, and then we've got the actual toilet seat, which we can't really see because the cover is over it, but you'd want to remove all three if you were trying to get rid of the toilet. So in order to do that, we're going to open this up. And it's pretty much the same as inspect. So we've got all the data we'd need. Now, we're looking at the world sector first, minus 51, 11, 1, 0. And I know that's basically, it's the same one here, right? So there's no updating. We can see that the total nodes is 353, same here. So there's no need to change that. So all we're going to really do is create a new entry. And we know that there are three different toilet pieces um, that we're going to want to work with here. So we do like toilet one. And then we can change the naming just to make it a little bit easier to track. And it's a world static mesh node. So that's another thing that's different. So static mesh node. And then I'm going to copy paste to update. Most likely the other two are the same. You know, you need to make sure you check because it might not be the case, but probably. And then the node ID 157 for this first one. And that's done. And then I go in and close it. I go on to the second one. We can see, yep, sure enough, 353. You know, it's the same sector data. So that's fine. We're really just going to update the ID to 143 because we've already changed the, uh, the name to toilet 2. And it's another static mesh node. So there's no problem there. The third one's also a static mesh node. Same thing, 138. So that's great. And then we get to this other piece, which is a bit separate. And this is a panel. So this one, even though it's like really close to this um, other toilet piece, it's actually in a different sector. We can see um, it's 10 instead of 11 here, but you can also notice quickly by just seeing the max or total rather number of nodes, 142. So it's different from the 353. So for that, we're going to want to set up a new sector. So I'm just going to copy paste it with one kind of entry block because obviously we're going to want an entry with it. I'm going to come into here. I'm going to once again click the middle mouse button over the sector text. And that's going to copy it. We're going to paste it here so we can see the number is different. It is a separate sector. We know we pasted it in well. We're going to update the total nodes. And we're going to call it toilet panel. And we're going to put in the ID for this. And this one is another world static mesh node. And that's basically it. That's pretty much the process. It's quite simple. We would save the file, reload, coming back in. You know, I've tested it. It works. I've got all this stuff in my thing, so I'm not going to bore you because I don't uh, have editing skills and I don't actually know how to cut stuff out yet. Uh, so that's pretty much it. To uh, give you a taste of what's possible with this, there's a lot of stuff you can remove. Um, see this kind of like steam cloud? I was not able to find this, so I'm still on the hunt for it. I've kind of given up for now. Uh, I was able to find a smoke cloud though that was in this room and get rid of that. I had a smoke cloud here as well. Got rid of that, which was great. This door was uh, a door that would open based on proximity in the past. And I really didn't like that because when I would go in the living room, it would auto open. So it doesn't feel very private. So I ended up doing a search and I ran a scan for that one and searched for door. And I actually found two files that seem relevant. So most objects you're trying to remove are mesh objects um, and they're described as dot mesh so toilet seat dot mesh panel dot mesh um, some of them are dot ents and those tend to have functions instead of actually being like um, a physical property of the object so i found a dot ent for the door that was like proxy door something and that was the function that would cause the door to open when you get near it so i entered it in same you know information as for the rest and it worked great and so it stopped opening the door automatically uh, unfortunately, then the door 
prop itself was still there, but there was no interaction built into it to manual open. So I was like stuck in the room. So then I went back in, searched, I found door mesh, removed that, and it created the space and everything's great. The collision that was there was built into the door. So removing the mesh got rid of it. And then I just kind of created my own. So I've got a new uh, apartment overhaul coming soon uh, for the Corpo Plaza. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much of it just now. But just to give you a sense, so I was able to put in my own door using AMM props that actually has manual open and close function. No more invasion of privacy, which is fantastic. Um, and another thing I was able to do with this was I couldn't get rid of the steam. So I just made it work to my advantage. And I kind of just created something that I thought looked like a neat feature. Added in, you know, some tech pieces around it to give it some framing. Uh, you know, threw in two different lights, orange and blue, which gave the steam more of a kind of... Uh, you know, an otherworldly vibe, basically. And that inspired me to drop a few hollow planets in. So now it's just a showpiece in the corner, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, I initially wanted to make an aquarium out of it, but the smoke was just uh, causing too many problems. So I just went with this. But it just goes to show, even if you can't remove the prop, you can, you know, potentially be creative and just find different ways to work with the thing that's remaining, uh, assuming you can't cover it up, which you often can do. So I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to say for in-game. The last uh, couple of points I wanted to make were just related to troubleshooting. So if you find that there's a problem, if you get in to the game and the entry you put in did not remove the prop, it could just be that, you know, maybe the prop is, is like I did find two or three entries that I just couldn't figure it out and it wouldn't remove the prop for some reason. So uh, I'm not sure what the cause of that is. Uh, but I just kind of gave up on those. Um, otherwise, though, you might end up making, you know, updating with a new entry. And then when you get in, all of a sudden, all the other entries from the same sector are no longer working. I've had that happen a handful of times. And very rarely I've had it happen that it stops all entries from working, period. So everything's kind of messed up at that point. Um, so one quick thing you can do is just copy everything in your Excel file and go to what's called YAML lint. As you can see up here, just yamalint.com. And basically just type in, or paste in rather, the information and then click go. And it'll tell you if there's a problem. So valid YAML, there's no issues with my syntax here. Uh, if there were, it would actually show me like which line. So like line uh, eight or something. And then, oh, look, I might have like a spelling error in here, right? So that's a, a pretty good way to check things out and see if there are any issues. Um, when in doubt, especially if you have something where it's ruining like your whole Excel file and none of your props are, are disappearing anymore, probably good to just revert. Um, so there, you could do a full reversion to backup uh, or potentially you could just delete the entry you just put in and redo it from the start because it's a pretty quick process. But this leads me to say that you typically don't want to remove like 30 to 50 plus nodes at once because if there's a problem with the entry on one, it could be a little tricky to track down what the problem is. Um, so I typically do about five or 10 at a time, and then I test basically to make sure that it's working. Uh, another little trick that I was using a bunch is to copy paste the node types. So as I mentioned, there are about a half dozen different node types here. And instead of typing it in every time, I just copy paste one that I are I've already basically shown works. I've already kind of tested it, it was good. Um, and so that way I know that there's less likely of any problems coming into play if I just copy paste that over. Uh, I've also had a few issues where props wouldn't remove. It wouldn't ruin the whole file or the sector, but that one prop wouldn't remove. And a few times I fixed it. Now you can just do the full redo, but I fixed it by just like copy pasting again, just to make sure that the node type was correct, because it's pretty easy to see, I find with the index number, whether it's correct. But, uh, you know, sometimes you, you might not spot like a little entry like that or something that just your brain didn't pick up on. So I think that pretty much covers everything. It's a pretty simple process, a little bit tedious, but uh, if you have any issues or questions, feel free to uh, post up. And I hope you have fun and uh, yeah, make some really cool stuff.